So, we have decided um, with our river house to um, potentially do short-term rentals in the spring, summertime, or something like that. And so, we've got to get the various bedroom setups with set up with beds. And we found a full-size bed frame from IKEA that has just bare wood. And so, we're going to stain the wood so that the bed frame looks really cute. Um, while I'm working on this project, one of the things that we figured we could discuss is the pitfalls, do's and don'ts of short-term rentals, whether it's Airbnb, maybe um, VRBO, maybe you can give like some of your thoughts on um, that side. While I do some staining, we can get some, um, just talk about how to approach Airbnb and how not to approach Airbnb. I was a stickler and Tim sort of had to tell me to like, chill out so yeah so well let's first start with the background um so we had a row house in dc downtown washington dc and uh we were moving out of it and we weren't sure if we wanted to long-term rent short-term rent or sell it so we started by long-term rental we wanted to try long-term rent it which is the real estate strategy we've had so far with the BRRR, buy, renovate, rent, um, and resell. Uh, and so we wanted to go long-term rental and we tried it, but we didn't get very good candidates and we weren't sure. Uh, we've heard rumors that DC is uh, more tenant friendly than landlord friendly. So we, we weren't sure about long-term rental. So then we tried short-term rental and we put it on Airbnb. I mean, we considered a couple different platforms. Um, I like Airbnb for one reason because it has insurance, which seems pretty solid uh, for, the, for the landlord, for the person who owns the house and is renting it to, uh, to the market. Uh, and so we went with Airbnb, we listed it, we furnished it, we had to gather up some furniture from uh, friends and family and uh, buy some new stuff and buy dishes, pots and pans, a second set for that home. Uh, so we got it all set up and then rented it and it didn't go, it wasn't exactly how we had dreamed it would be, how we would dream short-term rental would be. It was a little bit more difficult than that. Um, so what problems did we have? We started off as new, um, new hosts. And when you start off as a new host, it's almost like your listing isn't, um, I guess, promoted the best. Anyway, you get the, uh, you don't get the best um, rent to candidates when you're um, a new host. And so we got a lot of new people, um, a new renters that, that had just got on Airbnb. So in other words, we didn't know if they were going to treat our property well. And, um, and so some of the problems we have, like people would say, oh, I want this space for um, a family trip, a family um, visit to DC. One family, I think they did like a huge Thanksgiving dinner or holiday dinner there because there were like tons of scraps left over and the stove was left disgusting and it took a long time. It's like a, a tons and tons of cleaning that had to be done to the house. And when you're doing a short term rental, um, you don't want to have to do heavy, heavy cleaning. Now with the pandemic, obviously, like you, you've got to do a nice deep clean, but the type of cleaning that we had to do with that particular family was like a little bit extra. They like, they even messed up the glass table. Like the glass table has permanent, um, uh, um, scratches. Like, not scratches. It's like discoloration in the glass. It's like some, I don't know what they put me. It's almost like they burned the glass. Were they the ones um, that put toothpaste all in the bed sheets? No, that was another family. Okay. Another family, like um, had a toothpaste, the toothpaste accident with their uh, young kid, or I don't know who, but they use like our our towels and bed sheets to clean up the toothpaste accident, and that was a whole mess. 
And then there was. I don't even know if it's an accident. It was almost like a toothpaste food fight. Yeah. And then it was. It, it, then there was a. There was another family that it seemed like they um, used our good tiles to clean up a huge, like, spill, and the tiles were just disgusting, nasty, disgusting. Um, Airbnb actually, after I showed them proof, they went ahead and um, sent us money to purchase new tiles. So that was very, very nice of Airbnb. Um, another situation we had, um, there was a guy, uh, I shouldn't say who they are, but someone wanted to uh, use our space just for like a New Year's thing. We told them that's fine, just as long as there's no partying. And he said it, it was, he was just getting the space for uh, um, him and, and some family members who's coming in town so they can have a, a nice place to hang out. And I said, that's fine. Um, and I thought he was at the property. I texted and said, hey, have you arrived at the property? And he said, no, I told you I had to work. And I said, okay, fine. The camera tripped. And so I thought it was you. And seconds later, there was a cancellation notice coming through. And I refused to give him a full refund because he paid a discounted rate to get the rate that he received. And so then, and Airbnb really wanted me to give this person a full refund. And that's like, no, I'm not giving this person a full refund. They signed, they looked at the listing, signed up for the listing, knowing what the listing called for and got a discount on it. And he decided to cancel because he heard me say that, oh, it, uh, the camera system tripped. So that, tell, that told me that he was gonna have way more people at the property than he planned, or he planned to have a party, which we say no parties allowed, no guests, um, or there's a, a, a charge for each guest. So, uh, yeah, so the problems are the expectations, a lot of it was, like the expectations of new guests. And obviously, well, part of the reason that as a new uh, landlord, Airbnb, uh, landlord you um, have to set your prices and you have no ratings so you have no ratings on your properties you have no ratings on your profile uh, and so the so the guests don't know whether to, to uh, trust you or not and so you have to set the price low but that encourages new guests that don't care if you don't have a rating and like Darrell said and then those guests have expectations of what they're going to get when they get there. They've never dealt with, some of them have never dealt with Airbnb before. So they, their expectations might not be reasonable. It might, there might not be, um, you know, the, they might not understand how the, how the whole system works. Yeah, one family said our kitchen was disgusting in the ratings. And I mean, I am very thorough with cleaning and like I have a whole system set up where like, yeah, anyway. Um, but it was like, it's almost like some guests expect hotel grade like treatment when they're renting your house. Yeah, I mean, their expectations can go all the way from like hotel, uh, you know, furnishings and everything where everything's consistent, every bathroom looks the same and to even, you know, perfect concierge service where they want you to respond when they have a question. They want to know what restaurant to eat at and what, you know, attractions to visit. And it's just, it, it, it's sort of unreasonable because we were more the hands-off type, which some guests like, but then some guests want the hands-off in certain instances, but then they want us to be totally hands-on in other uh, respects. So. It's difficult to satisfy all the expectations. Um, what do you say about um, uh, um, should people explore Airbnb? Yeah, I I want to do it at this, like Darrell said, at the at our waterfront house. Uh, I think that it could get a lot of traffic from people looking for staycations uh, where. They want to get away, they want to take a vacation, they want to get out of their house, especially during this quarantine period. Uh, they want to get out of their house, but and they don't want to go too far. They want to only drive cars instead of flying, especially with the hassles there. Um, and but So they want to be close by, but in a different, totally different setting. And I think 
uh, this setting at, on the waterfront is very rural. It's uh, very natural. It's surrounded, you know, it's not surrounded by uh, much congestion. And so it's a nice getaway. It's a nice change in scenery. Uh, so I'd love to do Airbnb here, and I think we could do it. We have to, I think, again, we'd have to start with our expectations low. In yeah. other words, set the price low to get some guests in here. We have to be picky about which guests we let in, and we have to let them know. We have to set their expectations up front, too, and let them know, just like we did in New Year's Eve, these are the rules, and we're going to enforce them. Right. Um, yeah, I, and I don't think you necessarily need you know to be on top of them you don't need cameras everywhere or anything like that but you just have to you have to everybody has to have the same have a close to the same understanding of yeah. the expectations i was too much of a stickler i um wanted to know the name of each person that was going to be in the house each adult that was going to be in the house this time around i don't think i would ask for that because mm -hmm. it's like um, it just created a whole lot more drama than necessary trying to like account for who's coming in and who's not coming in and all that mess. It's like, look, if you're going to give someone your property, they can rent it, just tell them the max. And if you're able to prove that they violated your um, terms and support and you can, you know, send that that documentation, that supporting documentation to Airbnb to get additional phones, go for it. But I think this time around, I'll be much more relaxed than when I was with the DC Yeah, house. you can always have the rules, like you pay for additional guests and you pay for cleanup, additional cleanup costs. Um, but you don't, you try not to enforce them unless it's obvious, unless the additional guests cause, uh, you know, exponentially more cleanup costs or something like that where there's actually a cost to you and then you try to pass that cost on. But otherwise, True. You, yeah. you have to have obvious um, violations or damage, damage or yeah. cost uh, be, in, because you want, to, you want to look as cooperative as possible with the Not even look, you customers. want to be as cooperative as possible. Right. You want to get, provide good customer support and you want to provide a good experience for the guests so they, they can recommend your place to their friends and you make money. I think that's what I missed the first time around as a new Airbnb host. I was more so like, ugh, I don't want them to damage my place. I don't want to have this happen. I don't want to have that happen. And I was trying to be the enforcer as opposed to being um, a host. Yeah, but you try to make it simple for the guests. So if something gets broken, you should consider, you know, do you really need that in the property? Is there another way you can go about it? If a coffee maker gets broken, maybe you use a more industrial coffee maker so that they don't have to worry about, about uh, you know, being super careful. They can, they can just, it's more convenience than, uh, than extra care. What do you think of this color? It's, it's interesting. Yeah. It is red. It's not... There's not a lot of brown in it. It's strange looking. It's sort of like a um, pinkish. It's sort of yeah. pink on that. I think it's on the wood we have. I'm sure this IKEA wood is very cheap. I don't know if it's. I think it may go well with this room color. True. Yeah. And True. having that brick in there. It does look somewhat yeah. pink. And this room is pinkish purplish. Or maybe it's called lavender. Yeah, so I'm excited to rent this, uh, to try short-term rentals again on the waterfront. I think this house can uh, lends itself to several different configurations where we could rent um, sections of the house or the whole house at once uh, for big parties. Uh, I also think that it, it also provides an opportunity to provide additional value-added services. We could offer uh, kayak rental uh, here. I mean, we can provide a couple kayaks just for free with the rental, um, but then we could we could also provide more if they're requested uh, for an additional cost. Um, and we can do different things. I mean, you can always think about doing an actual bed and breakfast where you serve food, um, or just provide granola bars or something. If it's if especially if it's younger crowd at college. 
college crowd, you could ride granola bars or something. If Some cool a video videography of, if you know if your families are on the water and they want to get some aerial shots of them doing cool stuff on the water. Yeah. Potentially explore that. Yeah, kayaks, canoes, paddle, stand up paddle boards is a big um, fad right now. Uh, everybody loves stand up paddle boards and it's good exercise, good core exercise for balancing. I mean, if we had, uh, you know, college crowds here, of course, that's more risk of uh, damage that you take, but also it, they probably spend more time, especially during the uh, warmer months uh, outside and, uh, you know, uh, enjoying everything the area has to offer. So uh, I think it would be, I think people would really um, love it. I think it would be satisfying to see people enjoy enjoy the area and enjoy the property. I agree. You know what's going to be satisfying? Seeing this bat frame up. So, I'm excited for that. Yeah. All this hard work. <laughs>